Hello everybody and welcome to Letters from Jen. We are starting a brand new series today and it's all about the fragrance of the knowledge of God. Let's get into His Word together. of days the Lord has led me to certain scriptures that I really have taken to heart and I found that they have certainly brought much introspection now I'm well aware of the growing sense of urgency that's emerging in the church concerning living in the last of the last days here on earth and it's as though there's this great expectation for the church to actually step into a new and greater level of glory in Jesus where we know how to press in and experience a deeper walk of intimacy with him. In fact, we are called to an inseparable connection where we completely and continuously being transformed into his image from the inside out, where we actually become one with his heart and we have our minds in complete unity with his thoughts and we begin to declare his truth in love and authority everywhere we go and everywhere we are. In fact, we are living in a time where the church is coming into complete submission to the Lordship of Jesus Christ so that we can actually rise up in His authority to stand our ground in faith, push back the work of the enemy and usher in the glory of God as this world has never seen. But to stand completely submitted to Jesus like this requires everything of ourselves. It's a complete surrender of our wills to Jesus where we become inseparably connected to Him in heart, in thought and in everything we do. Why am I doing this? Because this is the day that we're going to begin walking in the perfect will of God for our lives. And the only way that we can actually achieve this is through a daily dying to ourselves as we surrender to Him. This means there cannot be one selfish motive or agenda that's lurking in our hearts and our minds. There's got to be no secret self-pride that's pushing and manipulating its way behind our words or our actions. Now only those with clean hands and a pure heart are going to be able to move as one with Him in the times that we're stepping into. Psalm 24 verse 46 says, He who has clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted himself up to falsehood or what is false, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation that is going to seek Him, inquire of and for Him of necessity and require of Him. We're going to seek His face and we will find Him. Now the Bible identifies a generation who deliberately seeks the Lord face to face as their necessity is going to be the ones who have clean hands and pure hearts and will be able to carry His agenda as their own. Why is this so important? Because I believe that one reason to be so intimately and intricately connected to Jesus through His Holy Spirit is so that we can carry the fragrance of knowing Him. Now 2 Corinthians chapter 2.14 says, But thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumph as trophies of Christ's victory and through us spreads and makes evident the fragrance of the knowledge of God everywhere. So really, I believe the heart of this message and of this letter that I'm, I'm wanting to bring to you today is to understand that we really are living in times where there's going to be a, a quite a distinctive um, difference between Christians who are really living by the presence of God, being led by the Spirit of God, who are deliberately spending time in the Word of God, and those who just claim to be Christians and are not really living for Christ. There is a great distinction between the two and it's really important that we need to make a choice today and decide which side we are on. Are we going to seriously live for Christ where His agenda becomes our own or are we going to just be lukewarm in our Christianity? Because these days that we're living in, we are coming so close to the end. In fact, we are in the last of the last days. 
where our decision to live for Christ completely, wholeheartedly, sold out to His Word, sold out to being led by the Spirit, that has got to be the very thing that governs us because it's the only thing that's going to cause us to walk in His favor and His blessing and in victory. If we're not that serious, we are going to fall by the wayside. We're going to get to the place where the enemy begins to dominate our lives and we miss out. We miss out on what God has already orchestrated from the beginning and the foundation of this earth. We miss out on being the victorious church that Jesus is coming back for. So it's not time to sleep. It's time to gear yourselves up in God. Be serious about who you are in Him so that we can walk victorious and especially in these last days, we have to have that one-on-one -on -one combat where we push back the enemy and bring in the glory of God. Now remember that scripture in 2 Corinthians uh, where it speaks about us being in a position where we can thank God who always leads us in victory in Christ Jesus. I, I know that we in the past times we've really focused on that first part of the scripture as a sure hope and encouragement. Actually engraving the truth that we will always triumph in Christ Jesus in our hearts. Now of course this is a wonderful promise of never ending victory for everyone who continues to live in Christ Jesus. But today I want to place emphasis on the verses that immediately follow after this great promise. In verse 15 and 16 it says, For we are the sweet fragrance of Christ, which exhales unto God, and it's discernible alike among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the latter, those that are perishing, it's an aroma that's wafted from death to death. It's a fatal odor and a smell of doom. But to the former, those who are not perishing, that are being saved, it's a fragrance of life. Now, did you know that you can instinctively recognize if someone has been in the presence of the Lord, there is a strong, undeniable sense of His unconditional love, His tenderness, there's a confidence and a beautiful humility that really lingers on a person. But it isn't something only sensed by those who are believers. This fragrance of knowing God is recognizable and very evident to those that are not saved but are open to the gospel and to those that are close to it too. Now we have heard many testimonies of people who after having a personal encounter with God carry the presence of the Lord on them without even realizing the effect that it's going to have on perfect strangers. The people could actually sense the presence of the Lord on them. They, they become convicted of their sins. As a result, surrender their lives to Jesus on the spot. Now there was one incident where a man after attending a revival meeting, actually walked into a store and without even mentioning a word, the man serving him behind the counter burst into tears and knew that he had to surrender his life to the Lord. Do you know what did that? It was the compelling uh, presence of the Holy Ghost that did that. The more time we spend in the presence of Jesus and in His Word, seeking His face, that very time that we have invested, deliberately invested into knowing God, it actually sets a fragrance, the fragrance of knowing God on our lives. And it's that fragrance that actually convicts people, uh, uh, convicts them of their sin, but with a desire to know God themselves to bring them into the saving grace of Jesus. Don't for a moment think that your time that you've pressed into Jesus' presence, pressed into His Word, encountered God in that secret place. Don't for one moment think that that is only for you. It's not. It actually puts inside of you and on you the fragrance of knowing God. And it is evident, very evident to and recognizable to people all around you, not just those who are saved, but also the Bible's just told you those that are unsaved, those that are being saved, where the Holy Spirit's already doing a work in their heart, and to those that are perishing. This is remarkable. 
So let's just clarify this truth again. The Bible says there is a distinct spiritual fragrance that comes on us and is carried by us when we push into the presence of the Lord, where we seek Him in His Word and we encounter Him. And the fragrance of the knowledge of God is what it's called. We carry is discernible. And it becomes evident to those who are being saved, meaning that their hearts are open to the gospel because the Holy Spirit is already at work in them. Now, for these people, the fragrance of knowing God is an aroma that draws them into receiving His saving grace. It's like that final tug on their hearts that's needed for them to openly surrender and fully commit their lives to Him. Without you speaking a word, the Holy Spirit does that. Then there are those whose hearts are closed to the gospel for whatever reason. And that fragrance of knowing God that is evident on us is a strong sense of doom where they know unless they repent, they are going to a godless eternity. Now, either way, this fragrance of knowing God is very real. And the Bible calls it an actual ministry, one that we must qualify for. Now, in next week's letter, I'm actually going to share from God's Word how it says we can qualify to operate in this ministry of carrying the fragrance of the knowledge of God. But until then, I want to encourage you to choose to diligently push into the presence of the Lord for yourself. Seek Him in His Word and encounter Him. Seek His face as your necessity and allow His Holy Spirit and His Word to do a transforming work in you. A work where you begin each day confident that you have clean hands and a pure heart before Him, ready to step into a glorious partnership with Him. Because this is essential for us to live in powerful victory in these last of last days. So until next week, God bless you and goodbye.